Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. Well, it was five years ago today that a gunman forced his way into the Capital Gazette newspaper office at Annapolis and opened fire, killing five people. A remembrance and wreath laying ceremony was held today at the Guardians of the First Amendment Memorial in Annapolis. There are five staffers that were killed on June 28, 2018 in the largest mass shooting of journalists in U.S. history. Governor Wes Moore has proclaimed June 28 as Freedom of the Press Day in Maryland. One of the speakers was Maria Hyacin, whose husband, Rob, was gunned down that day. I got to tell you, I'm also extremely grateful that it feels so much better this June 28th than it did that one in 2018. Um, my heart aches for those, uh, the recent victims and families of the, the other mass shooting in Annapolis. But I am here to tell you that strength, love, patience, and time do make things better, and it is a journey. The convicted gunman Gerard Ramos is serving five consecutive life sentences. Well, this was the scene of a double homicide in Camp Springs this morning. Officers responded to the shooting that took place at the Super 8 Hotel on Allentown Road around 7 a.m. They found two males suffering from gunshot wounds. One was pronounced dead on the scene. The other was taken to the hospital and pronounced dead later. Police don't believe this was a random act and are still looking for suspects and a motive. If you have any information on the shooting, you're asked to contact police. As the nation prepares to celebrate its 247th birthday, many Americans are getting ready to head out of town. AAA says more than 50 million people will take to the skies, rails, and roads for the holiday. Of those, 1.2 million will be traveling from the D.C. metro area. According to AAA, it's the first time our area exceeds pre-pandemic holiday travel numbers since 2019 news is for the vast majority of people in our region who will be uh, driving to their holiday destinations is that gas prices are down significantly compared to last year. Here in the D.C. metro area, gas prices are at about $3.48 a gallon, and that's more than $1.40 less than what we were paying this time last year. And Ali says those planning on driving on Friday, the best time to do so is before 10 a.m. and after 6 p.m. Well, smoke from Canadian wildfires is back in our area, prompting air quality officials to declare a code orange for the area. The designation means the air is unhealthy for certain groups like children and older adults, as well as with people who have asthma and other respiratory conditions. Today's air quality is not as bad as the code purple conditions we suffered through earlier this month. Still, you're asked to limit outdoor activities. The smoke is expected to be out of the area by Friday. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. We'll be back in just a moment. Wounded Warrior Project has been with me every step of my journey. They've helped me realize it's possible to rise to the top again. It's possible to get the help I need for me and my family. It's possible to hate push-ups again. To feel understood. <laughs> to begin healing both inside and out. To feel like myself again. And now I know anything is possible. Welcome back. Police tonight are again asking for your help in a hit and run case. We told you earlier this month about a crash that critically injured a motorcyclist. That motorcyclist, 30 year old Michael Robinson of Hyattsville has now died. Police say the suspect vehicle shown here crashed into Robinson back on June 13th on Woodyard Road in Clinton. Officials say the car crossed a double yellow line, hit Robinson and fled the scene. Anyone with information on the case is asked to contact authorities. For police investigate a death in Akakik. The victim was found around 8 o'clock last night 
in the, fifth, in the 500 block of Farmington Road in the Piscataway Park area. Investigators say he was suffering from trauma but would not elaborate. He was pronounced dead at the scene. No word yet on a suspect or motive. Anyone who may have information is asked to contact police. And authorities have identified the firefighter killed battling a blaze in St. Mary's County. He's 25-year-old Bryce Trosbach, a firefighter assigned to the Patuxent River Naval Air Station. He died after falling through a floor in a Leonardtown house fire. Trosbach was among many Navy base and volunteer firefighters who responded to the early morning fire yesterday. The two people are left with traumatic injuries in Montgomery County after fireworks explode in their home. The incident happened Tuesday afternoon in the 14,200 block of Cervantes Avenue near Seneca Road. When firefighters arrived, they found a blown out garage and cars in a driveway with extensive damage from the blast. The explosion was reportedly the result of a resident misusing or modifying fireworks. Officials estimate $400,000 in damages. And the city of Laurel is preparing for its 44th Independence Day celebration. The day-long event will include a parade, car show, family fun events, and of course fireworks. There will also be live music featuring the Oracle. CTV spoke with the event chair this morning about what will make this year's festivities different. The best thing coming out Saturday is going to be the community spirit. I'm going to enjoy seeing everybody gather together and come out and celebrate our nation's birthday. And then we have our centenarians. So they are our theme this year. We are honoring and recognizing them for everything that the elderly have had to go through in the past years. So this will be the last group that we're recognizing due to the pandemic. And the Independence Day celebration will be this Saturday, July 1st. If you want to know more about the event, you can follow the Laurel 4th of July celebration Facebook page, or you can visit the City of Laurel website. Well, yesterday at the SLK free HIV testing event, CTV met Deborah Dyson. Dyson was sexually assaulted at the age of 12 and contracted the HIV virus. She calls her diagnosis a blessing and wants people to know that HIV is not a death sentence. Time when I was going to Whitman Walk, and that's how I found out that I did the testing, I wanted to kill myself. My mother, I would go to her house for dinner, and she would have me to eat out of a plastic plate, use a fork, a glass, and if I used the bathroom, I had to clean up. That was the stigma, and that stigma right there taught me something, that I can't allow that to be my life. I lived with this disease for 66 years, and uh, I'm okay with it. I've survived, and I'm going to be here to 101. That's my plan. And Dyson is a proud mother of three HIV-negative children. She wants to spend the rest of her days uplifting those with HIV and improving that stereotypes of those infected are wrong. The family of a prominent Baltimore attorney and banker files a wrongful death lawsuit against the Archdiocese of Baltimore and others for alleged negligence. Francis Gallagher Jr. was allegedly molested by Father Mark Haight when he was just 14 years old. According to the lawsuit, that abuse and the subsequent trauma led Gallagher to an early death last August when he fatally overdosed after decades of battling substance abuse. Our father lost his valiant battle against his trauma just last year in August when he died from a drug overdose while awaiting the release of the AG's report to which he contributed his story and his documents. How further destroyed he would be to see the Archdiocese continue its campaign of deceit in the months since his death. And Haight is not a defendant in the lawsuit. He was removed from ministry in 1996, although the reason why did not become public until years later. Still to come here on CTV News, Simon Bugs with your Wednesday Sports Page Report. Stay with us. Hey everyone, and coming up in a bit, Bowie Bay Sox team manager Kyle Moore talks about the team's upcoming matchup against the Somerset Patriots and two UMD sports teams add some great pieces. 
don't move. When I got COVID, I had to take time away from the gym. But now that I'm back in the groove, I won't let COVID catch me with my guard down again. A repeat COVID infection can increase the risk of hospitalization or long COVID. So I got an updated COVID vaccine to boost my protection. Around here, they call me the answer. So getting my vaccine was no question. Well, two organizations work with the commanders to teach and engage young athletes from the district, the Hustlers Guild and beyond. Your block teamed up with the Washington Commanders Charitable Foundation for a summer workshop at FedEx Field this afternoon. The organizers focused on teaching the middle school kids important life skills like conflict resolution, while also addressing the importance of keeping your mind and body right. The preteens also took part in some football drills and stretches. We're trying to find a very engaging way through their interests uh, to really kind of figure out decision making, de-escalation, and Red is going to host an amazing session today where he's introducing these skills to the students on a day-to-day -day that are athletes. Well, you know, social and emotional learning is a very key point to what we got to teach our young people, dealing with uh, social environments, dealing with their own emotion, and, and we got to have them learn that situation. Plus, when they get off their block, they get a chance to see things in a different perspective. And organizers say that today's event is one of five summer workshops that they will be doing with the youth. Well, trails around the county will, be, will now be getting uh, some extra funding thanks to a new $25 million park grant. The county executive, Angela Alserbrooks, made the announcement today. She says the funding will be used to move forward with the Central Avenue Connector Trail. The trail is a key component to build walkable and bikeable communities around the Blue Line Corridor. The grant will also be used toward other trails throughout Prince George's and Montgomery counties, as well as in the district. All right, everyone, it's time for your Wednesday sports page. We'll start with some minor league baseball. The Bowie Bay Sox will try and get back in the win column tonight as they go up against the Somerset Patriots. This will be Bowie's first time going up against the Patriots this year, and team manager Kyle Moore says he and the team are looking forward to the challenge ahead. Yeah, I mean, they're a Yankees farm system, so anytime we play the Yankees, I feel like everybody kind of gets up a little bit. You know, it's always nice to compete against the Yankees. Uh, they run a lot. They have, I think, either the most or the second most stolen bases in the league. So we got to combat that. we got to figure out a way to shut down that running game or at least hold it at bay a little bit so that we can score some runs ourselves. And uh, I'm sure they'll have some, some promotions just like we do all the time, guys going to AAA. Uh, they won the first half, so it'll be a giant challenge for us. Uh, but we're looking forward to it. The ball game starts at 635. Switching to more baseball news, Maryland native John Poss has been hired to be the assistant coach as well as recruiting coordinator for the Terps baseball team. The DeMatha High School alumnus will be returning to the area after six years as the head baseball coach at Wilson College. This past season, Poss led Wilson to a 34-10 record as well as a 14-4 record within their conference. Poss played college ball at UMBC and also briefly with the Baltimore Orioles. Wrapping up sports, the Terps women's lacrosse team adds a quality player to their roster and former Rutgers star Megan Ball as she has verbally committed to Maryland. Ball is a very talented player winning the 2023 Big Ten Defender of the Year Award and First Team All-American Honors. And that is your Wednesday sports page. Simon Bugs, CTV Sports. Thanks, Simon. And that is your CTV News for now. I'm Patricia Vallone. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.